Today we'll be reviewing the JG Aurora A5 3D printer. At least I think that's what it is. I'm not actually too sure what this 3D printer is supposed to be. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse. The A5 is one of the machines that caught my eye at the end of 2017, produced by Chinese manufacturer JG Aurora. Some of you may remember my review of the A3, a kit with a mishmash of 3D printed CNC, aluminium and sheet steel components. It was okay, could be better, uh, but this machine looks nothing like it and it's part of a new range of machines JG Aurora has produced, including the A4, A7 and the updated A3S. What I find interesting is that JG Aurora actually emailed me about the A7 way back in February 2017 and they have these really, really weird videos about this new range of 3D printers dating back as far as March 2017. It's a cinch. Look at me. Okay, let's start. Focus. Keep your eyes open. The miracle is coming right now our way. They're, uh, they're worth having a look at. Links in the description. But enough about those other 3D printers, this is the A5, so let's take a look at its specs. The JG Aurora A5 sports a print volume of 305 by 305 by 320 millimeters and runs a single Bowden style extruder with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle from the factory. It has this futuristic curvy sheet metal frame with a tilted front touchscreen interface and big bolt uprights with white plastic accents which are basically tacked in with hot glue. It can be controlled via USB, a nice upgrade from SD cards, or you can tether it to your PC. It also has Wi-Fi in the menu options, but it doesn't work. Um, I took a look inside the machine from the side and I couldn't see any ESP8266 or similar Wi-Fi module. So I reckon it's just a reused menu from the other printers. I could be wrong and I hope I am, and it, that might even mean you can just easily add your own Wi-Fi module later to enable Wi-Fi, maybe. I'm not sure. Anyway, the A5 is a pretty big machine, as you can see, so keep that in mind. It's heavier built than the CR10 style aluminium extrusion printers with a similar build volume and commands a large amount of bench space. The feet it sits on are actually so far apart, I actually had to put it sideways on my workbench to make sure they would sit properly. And it comes in an equally large box with the gantry, which is this part here, flat packed like almost every other Chinese i3 style printer to save on shipping costs. It's actually super easy to attach with just a few, a few screws and a few plugs and you'll be up and running in probably about 10 minutes I'd say. The designers have clearly put a lot of effort into hiding the mechanics away and it results in a quite a nice aesthetic with the Y axis motion components being completely hidden away in the chassis, although this will make maintenance quite difficult. With a machine that visually looks this polished, you'd expect there to be no 3D printed parts inside. Well, there is. Hidden away inside the gantry and probably other parts of the chassis. I wouldn't normally care, but this machine actually arrived with the top rod supports busted off. Who taps M3s into 3D printed parts anyway? Seriously, anyway, uh, I did a bit of a patch job and it does work now, but ideally they should be injection molded with threaded inserts or at least use plastide screws. It's the start of 2018, so realistically any 3D printer in this price point and above needs to have some degree of smarts to it. And the A5 does indeed have some, namely power outage recovery and filament out detection. And I'm happy to report that power recovery works awesomely well actually in my experience, with there being pretty much no recognizable seam where on the model where you stop and start again, and it actually waits to heat up fully before trying to home the nozzle. So the nozzle doesn't rip the model apart if it's cooled to touching the layers, unlike some other 3D printers I've tested. The filament out detection also works quite well, and man, you'll know about it with the piercing squeal it makes until you're able to reload new filament and resume. I did have a little bit of difficulty withdrawing the filament after it ran out, but you can actually just feed it forwards a bit and undo the Bowden tube and then just pull it out and then load fresh PLA in. It's not a big deal and not something I'll be doing very often. I'm not intending to run out of filament or tripping the power, but they are both very handy features to have when you're doing long prints using a lot of material. 
Next, let's chat about that print surface. It's glass with a fine dot pattern printed on top, which they're calling the black diamond platform. The exact nature of the coating, I have no idea. It's totally unknown to me, but man, does it work. The print surface heats up and the parts stick down beautifully. And then once the print's done, you let it cool down and the parts can be easily released. In fact, it's the same technology seen in the Anycubic Ultra Base, and whether JG Aurora licensed it or just figured out what it was and stole the idea, we'll probably never know. What's less impressive, however, is the inaccurate Z homing sequence, which through a combination of the springs on the bed, cheap switch on the Z axis, and the moving way too fast when it homes, it means a very inaccurate Z home position, which has resulted in this disaster. I tried to print a tolerance gauge test and it stuck so well I had to resort to using tools and eventually a hammer to remove it from the glass print surface. And now it has permanently damaged that surface, which sucks. And this is a printer I hadn't moved since printing all my other test prints. So definitely could be improved with a better switch or maybe even a sensitive probe for leveling as well. Also, according to the listing on Gearbest, it's removable. Um, yeah, what? No, it's, uh, it's definitely not removable. This, my friends, is where it gets really, really weird. The JG Aurora website lists the A5 as having the following features. Removable magnetic heated platform allows easy removal of the platform and the printed parts and a cleaner appearance. Appearance. Well, um, no, unless I'm missing something completely, the glass plate is permanently bonded to the aluminium heat bed. There's no way you can remove it. But what else does the product page say? Unique gapless feeding system, load filament smoothly, print excellent models. Well, yes, otherwise known as a Bowden extruder system. Um, if you had a gap in your Bowden extruder, I'd imagine it wouldn't work very well. Unless they mean something to do with the hot end, which at a glance looks like a mix of a bit of a custom heatsink and clone E3D V6 hardware. Next, Intellective large touchscreen control provides better 3D printing user experience, semi-automatic leveling control. Ah, I hear you guys say, finally another 3D printer that can sort out the bed leveling intricacies on its own. Well, the touchscreen works pretty well. It's full color and easily readable, but it definitely could be improved. For example, preheating the machine is like, is it heating yet? I'm not sure. But yeah, that leveling, let's just test out the semi-automatic bed leveling then. Okay, it homes and then, um, yeah, it just has predetermined points to move the gantry around so you can adjust the bed manually on four spring points. Um, I suppose you could call it semi-automatic with like 5% automatic and 95% you do it the rest yourself like all the other i3 printers I've tested from China But due to the frame design they've had to offset these points it moves to so you can actually access the springs So it's not perfectly over the top of the springs You'll have to go around at least twice to get it accurate and again going back to that Z level It doesn't seem to be 100% reliable this machine looks very polished and I would have absolutely loved to see some sort of bed level and offset probe for the nozzle. It wouldn't have been that much, that hard to add. There's lots of space in the gantry, but alas, it was not to be. Power failure protection. Resume print from where the last print is stopped due to power failure. Yes, this feature actually works awesome. Good job, JG Aurora. Next, the automatic material recognition system saves time and effort with material information and print profiles? Um, what? The machine came with a baby PLA roll and this metal spool holder, and um, it certainly had no idea what that material was. It just all came up to the G code I was loading into it. In fact, I ran all my print tests using a CR10 profile in Simplify 3D. Worked pretty well. And this is on their own website. What the heck are you talking about, JG Aurora? Is this copy pasted from like some other printer or just straight up misleading advertising? Um, again, they don't mention Wi Fi there, but there's Wi Fi in the menu, but it doesn't work. But wait, guys, it gets a little bit better. Let's search for the A5 on Gearbest. Two printers. Yeah, what? I was only set this machine right at the end of December 2017, so it's not like this is a six month redesign. They sent one of the first machines to me. So are you telling me they've got an updated version already? The text for both is identical too, by the way, it's just pure copy paste. And the pictures show various renders which look different to each other. So yeah, I have no clue which generation of A5 this machine is. It's got the, the white uh, labels, so whatever. 
Let's see how it prints. First of all, money cat. All the Chinese printers are coming with this stupid file preloaded. It's actually pretty cute. So this is the Chinese money cat that comes preloaded on all of these Chinese printers now. And it actually printed really, really nicely in the white PLA that was provided. Uh, it's got nice texture and no visible artifacts. Although it does have a texture on it to kind of hide that. Next was a more challenging cat, the Gaia Anderson cat which is one of my favorite test prints because it's quite challenging to print these legs. So this turned out really nice as well and I don't see any real visible Z banding or anything like that on this print. I'm overall very impressed with it. And during a recent stream on Makers Muse Live, I tested the A5 against a few other 3D printers, including the newly released Prusa i3 Mark III, and it actually held its own. I was really impressed. So despite the compact extruder design, the print cooling fan actually seems to be quite effective. Um, but it does, one of them is making a bit of noise now, which then sort of warms up. So they're probably not the best quality. But nonetheless, I was blown away by the print quality of this basic lattice torture test. This is one of the best I've ever printed. It did print quite slowly, taking about an hour or so to print, but it is fantastic at 250 microns, which is, pretty coarse and difficult to print. It's actually insultingly good, especially considering I was just using a CR10 profile and didn't really do any tweaks. Lastly, I wanted to do a really good burn-in test. So my final test was to throw the Scan the World Triceratops skull at it, scaled up. This is awesome. It's one of my favorite difficult to print models. I love the Scan the World initiative, by the way, shout out to my mini factory. Uh, but this thing took like over two days to print but the results are well worth it. I actually even had a power outage that I had to pull the power and reconnect it and you cannot tell where it was. It was somewhere up towards the top, perhaps that one little line there, almost impossible to see. And the PLA supports underneath worked really well and they were lots of fun to remove. They stuck to the print surface great and uh, yeah, and it took a little bit of gentle persuasion to break them off. And as I mentioned before, my tolerance test gauge was a complete failure. I wanted to get this review out, so I will reprint this again and share my results on Twitter at Makers Muse. But if you're keen to see more prints on this machine, I can highly recommend Da Hai's review, which you can check out here on, in the description. He's done a great job looking at the A5 in depth in his video. So, final thoughts on the JG Aurora A5. It works really well and is capable of producing decent prints in my experience. But like, it's not the machine they claim it is on the website. JG Aurora, for the love of 3D printing, hires someone to properly market your 3D printers to a Western audience. This machine prints far better than the A3 I tested last year, has a professional look, as well as a substantial sized print volume, all for around $360 US or under $500 Australian, which is Again, crazy, printers are so cheap now. Uh, it's a classic case of gear best Russian roulette though. Like, I was a winner in this roundup. And uh, despite my machine arriving slightly damaged, I'm quite happy with this quirky 3D printer. Quirky. But these companies love to update or change parts in their machine without telling anyone. So there's no guarantee you'll get the same experience as me. You can bet there'll be changes. They might be subtle and they might be major and they might be good and they might be bad. I don't know. But if you're okay with that, I'll stick an affiliate purchase link in the video description should you want to pick one up on your own. I do get a small kickback, but I do hope you trust me when I say this video was purely my own thoughts and opinions. Gearbest simply sent me the machine. If you found this video useful, guys, I'd love to have you subscribe. This channel is all about empowering your creativity through 3D printing technology, and I would love to have you on board. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Catch you later, guys. Bye.